Mike the Troop Jackson, back with another edition of Fighters Talk. And I'm out here in Charlotte, North Carolina with my guy, Emperor Kasayane. Come on, man, how are you? Dude, I, I'm doing well, first of all. But one thing that is impressed, cause I like when, when people I know are stepping to the cage and, now I do get the jitters. So every time yeah. fight, I'm watching, I'm like, this fight, like, I get little bubbles. But then when I, when I see, after the bell rings, I, I even for me though, like I'm kind of the same way. When I'm getting ready for a fight, I have the nerves, have the jitters. Once the bell rings, it kind of goes away because I know like I have no other option at this point. <laughs> so it's kind of the same for you guys. Um, but when you you know you you've been on a tier lately, you know you've been a you've been a sort of like a up and coming prospect. You know with the LFA, you're undefeated. Um, you get the call for Dana White's Contender Series, a couple fights, and then eventually you get the shot, man. You get the get the opportunity. And then you you go and you you, you grab that Thank and you. you get the W. But before that, I want to go back because this is the first time we were able to sit and do one of these kind of interviews. Mm -hmm. But uh, from what I can tell you, you are an athlete. You start. You had a football background, correct? Mm -hmm. Tell me tell me about that. Like tell me about growing up and football being like a love and a passion for you. So it's funny actually. I kind of grew up without any sports. I grew up playing music. Um, oh wow! What yeah. instrument? Played tuba and guitar mostly, and ah. sang some a lot, especially through high school. But okay. I went to art school back in Florida, where I'm from, um, and it's a place called Middle School of the Arts. And like mm -hmm. I did some art high schools and some other like boarding schools. Mm -hmm. But my family then decided to move to North Carolina. And being a kid, I didn't want to be by myself. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So when I got to my, my parents were from Congo and Central Africa, sports aren't respected like they are here in Western culture. Right. So when I came to North Carolina. All the way through high school until my senior year, I ended up playing football. Like in junior, I was on the team, but I didn't. I didn't even have to put pads on. I got the pads stuck on me the first, <laughs> the first day. And coach was like, "Yeah, you're just gonna learn the game right now." I had no clue what to do. I didn't like. I knew of a position just because I've seen it and watched it, but I didn't know like what anybody else did. So my so senior, you had, did you did you really know anything about football? Get into it? Uh, not really. Like not like I thought. Like I just knew it was. You gotta go one way or the other. And oh, so, so I was like, "Let me play this." And I, I thought it was fun because you could hit people and it was a good right, right, sport. Right. And since I was a kid, I was, like, I was interested in boxing. My mom was like, you're not doing that. It's same with football. I was the same way. Yeah. I wanted to be in karate as a kid, mm -hmm. and my mother told me no. Oh, and man. I didn't understand it. And that, I, that, I, my joke now was like, mm -hmm. see, I ended up becoming a fighter because you didn't let me do karate. <laughs> see, that's pretty much how I was from there. See, now I said, when you can pay for it on your own, then you can start doing it. It's like, ah, when I was in okay, college, okay. I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. But yeah, so my senior year, I played football. And then I went to Western Carolina University okay. uh, here in, the, in North Carolina, the western part of it. And they're the mountains, sorry. Uh, then I transferred to junior college, ASA, mm -hmm. in New York City. And then I finished at Lenore Ryan, just an hour up the road from here. Okay. In Hickory, North Carolina, small D2 school. How, how do you get to New York from, from North Carolina? Well, I wanted a better football opportunity. And okay. when I was at my freshman year, I was at a school that wasn't doing doing too well. So like, I was like, well, let me see what I can do. So really, I really wanted to play in the NFL. I wanted to go somewhere special. And... Uh, I was like, let me go somewhere where I can get maybe scholarship and opportunity. I ended up going to ASA because okay. I wanted to just like get some offers and, and and see what I could do with it. But the school wasn't accredited, Man. so I got a few offers like to go to Temple and Marshall. Okay. And I had an opportunity to go like walk on at Ole Miss, but I couldn't transfer in because they wouldn't accept it. Which I actually found out was actually a mis mistake in like the writing. So I could have went to Temple, I could have went to Marshall, but God had a better plan and ended up. Me See, towards. look at that. Yeah. Glass half full. For sure. I, lo I, I oh, love yeah. it. I love it. I love it. Oh, it's full enough, you know, and I ended up going to Lenore Ryan, which I love, and they're super supportive. You know, being mm -hmm. a, a team that's within the state, you get a lot of, like, you know, support from them and right. everybody in the Hickory area, so definitely appreciate it. That's what's up, man. So you go through that journey with football. Mm -hmm. That comes to a close after, you know, once school is finished. Mm -hmm. How do you get into fighting? So my senior season, I was going into at Lenore Ryan. I transferred in spring 2015, going to my junior year. Then my senior season, I was staying at school in the summer, like working out, getting ready for the next season, and not working, doing landscaping, taking some summer classes, you know, to take grad, you know, graduate that coming year. And I saw some like you know, football players who like Clay Matthews and other guys who were in yeah. training in mixed martial arts to get better at football. And I was like, you know what, I'll do this. And you know, that's what my, my goal was the NFL at the time. Mm. And so you've always had aspirations of, of, of reaching a pinnacle of whatever you, you 
whatever, whether it's a sport, sure. whether it's a musical instrument, you want it to be the best. Yes, sir, yeah, my, my dream, I would say, I don't want to be the best, I need to be the best. Sometimes oh, sure. I feel like that's like I need to do it, so. See, and that's a, that in itself, right there, is a different mindset. When, between want, needing something, mm -hmm. like to succeed in a fulfillment or whatever, and wanting something, like it's going to give you, it, that, those are two separate drops, mm -hmm. I, I feel. So for you to have that mind, because no, I've never had someone tell me, like, yo, I need to succeed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always like, I want this, I want that. But for you to have that, I need to, that's just going to give you a different drop. Yes, sir, for sure. Like, I, so, I mean, I was wanted to, when I was young, I was like, I want to be a professional athlete in something. I'll be a professional athlete, a musician or athlete. Those are kind of two routes mm -hmm. I always see myself going in life. And when I started sports, I was like, okay, I want to be in the football hall of fame. Like, I was like, you go to Kent and have a great career, do that. When football didn't work out, I was like, okay. And I found out MMA is what I've been called to do or fighting is what I've been called to do. I like, okay, my goal is the UFC hall of fame. What do I need to do? What do I need to get there? It's so, like, you know, every step, every baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. You know, you start on the local, the regional, then national, then not to the international stage. But like I said, man, I need to do something I can be the best. And so like, how do I separate myself? And when I found MMA, I was one day sitting in college and I started watching, I was like, Bellator UFC fights. And it was during the summer, I was like, you know what? I could do this. So I was like, as I started, I found the gym. I tried to use that as my excuse to get better at football. Uh -huh. And then I just started going every day after football practice. Like I would finish practice. Mm -hmm. I wasn't playing a lot my senior year. And so I was like, well, I was fresh. And I was like, well, I need to do something. And man, after that, like the first time getting on my mats, I'm like, this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. Man, it, yeah. I, see, I was the same way. Uh, I remember walking into a gym. It was, uh, it was like April. Well, I, the first time I walked in, it was like a January, February of that year, it was like 2008. I walked in because I, I also was like, I want. I, I was watching it. I was a fan of boxing growing up. And you get introduced to it, you're like, oh, I can do that. Yeah. I want to try out, right? Yeah. And I remember walking into a gym, just watching the class. And for me, I was like, that's it. So I remember, because I was at the time I was at Texas A&M, oh, really? and uh, I was basically waiting for that refund check to come through. Because <laughs> I never told my mom. I remember my mom didn't find out I was fighting until like that summer. Uh -huh. So I started training April 2008, like mm -hmm. April 1st. I remember because I I wanted to. I hate. I'm a guy who. I don't want the draft to start like week two. Mm -hmm. I was thinking it was gonna start the, the beginning of the month. Got started on the first, mm -hmm. so I waited a little bit. Um, I was training, and then I ended up having. I, I saw it. It was an old message board. This is bad. This is 2008, right? Old message board, and it was Mick Maynard at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a. It was a show called Lone Star Beatdown. This is way before LFA, way before Legacy. Um, and he was like, "Yo." We have these fights in College Station yeah. because that's actually where Legacy started. It was born in College Station. It no was kind of like a, a UT versus Texas A&M thing. No way. No um, way. And I, dude, I was training for I was training for six months before I had my first fight. And I go out there, I strangle this dude, and I was like, "This is it." <laughs> I was like, "Yo, this is it." So I understand like when you find something that it just kind of cap. Because for me, I didn't know what I was gonna do. Mm. My dad was a doctor. My mom was a nurse. Mm. They wanted me to go to medical school. I actually, in high school, I was in engineering academy. Mm. So I did that. And then I'm sitting in school like, man, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do? And then I find fighting. Mm. And then you say, like, yo, that's it, you know? So I understand the process. Um, as an amateur, you competed. That's and you, you had a solid career. It was a 4-1, I wanna mm -hmm. say. Um, what was the decision from, from, for you? How did you know it was time to go from amateur to pro? Well, I remember it actually started after the fight that I lost. I kind of got caught up in my own like, head and mm -hmm. just being arrogant and cocky. And the fighter was good. He had an awesome game plan, nothing against him. But I remember when I lost that fight, I said, okay, like, never letting this happen again. And this is going to be what I'm going to do. Time to get right, let everything else go. Was it the, the, the loss in itself, or was there something in the fight that you saw or felt and you was like, well, I remember just not listening to my coach as well and kind of uh, like going into his, like, his game plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he executed it well. And I was like, you know what? What would happen if I listened? What would happen if I, you know, took it like, took it much more seriously? Because I had my first fight um, in college, and that oh, was, so a couple weeks after training, they're like, "Hey, do you want to fight?" I'm like, "Yeah, for sure." So I <laughs> and uh, I was so happy, got that victory. It, it went really well, you know. Finished in the first round, mm -hmm. which is a blessing. So didn't like go crazy, but I was the dumb. I was like throwing right here, right, right, just right. in a circle. I was like, "There's like, thank God we won that," because you know, could I look crazy if you just got countered or something? So I was like, hey, right. "I never do that again." Um, 
Uh, okay, I want to do this, but I finished school at a graduate. Okay. I was taking 26 credits my senior year, last semester, so I was definitely, Wait. Yeah, I was double in finance. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. it was a full yeah. load, because I transferred in, and I was told, oh, you don't need these classes to graduate. Said, okay, whatever, you don't need this. And they said, hey, why don't you take these classes? I'm like, I was told I didn't need them. Or I probably misunderstood saying, you know, so I was just like, whatever. Advisors, me, I was misadvised, like, yeah. throughout my college career, too, so Man. I get it. So I don't know. It was one of the two. I had an amazing advisor, or I probably had, to, probably had to listen. I was like, I'll just do it later. Then they're like, hey, you going to take these? I'm like, yeah, how many credits are there? And I'm taking an overload. Plus, um, getting ready for the fight. I was cutting weight between classes. Had no clue. 230 pounds to... Uh, 184. No! <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. Wait. Yeah. Oh, man. I see. I remember, again, my very first fight, I, it was a 170. And I think I was walking about like 78. 70, and I was like, bro, I'm going to lose eight, nine pounds. <laughs> and you over here cutting like 45 pounds. Yeah. You know I mean? 46 total pounds. And I just remember like, I did it like in eight days. That was, That's why. It was not smart or healthy. Not walking, dude, all my teammates were laughing at me like, bro, you look crazy. And, um, oh gosh, it was just crazy. So I, I finished school, then I found Jimbo. That's, okay. that's what um, somebody recommended. Brandon Burrowhart. Okay. That's where I mentioned this, and the guy named Tommy DiBernardo. I mentioned coming here, and I was blessed to come here. I remember I came up to the coach and said, hey, can I fight? And he goes, how about you train for a year? <laughs> and Which is smart. Yeah. Shout out to Jeff. Yeah, it's... coach is, he's the man. You, you know coaching. He, and that's the other thing is, like, you, you found – here in, 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 in Gastonia and Charlotte, you know, you found an amazing home. This is a this is a gym that I love to come through um, when I'm in town. And the reason why it's not like you get the fight gym vibes, but it's it's almost like a cross between a fight gym and a traditional martial arts gym. Mm -hmm. You get the respect and, and that kind of instruction. But then you got some kids. You get Cell, Brian Barberina, Ricky Rain. You have some solid guys in here. To, to, to learn from it and get that work in. So, no, I, I love coming here. So you, you found Jimmo. For sure, yes, yeah. so I found Jimmo. And I remember I walked in, I was, I was planning to move to New York because I went up there after my first amateur fight to see how pros train mm -hmm. with all these different gyms. Uh, I was like, do I go to Wisconsin? Do I go to Texas? Do I go to California? Like, all I knew like the big state gyms, like big names. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, check out Jimmo. I was like, okay. And he's like, you're going to love it. it. Might not be like the place, like, you know, it's like, we're kind of like a small gym. Right, but right. It's like, when you get there, you'll feel it. But right when I walked in, I was like, okay, this is about the place I need to be, like, meeting coach, mother, dad, you know, I, I right. guess I'm blessed with two of them now, and he's, loves us a lot, teaches us so much, and even though I'm slow sometimes, he's just, like, so patient. Um, <laughs> you need that, though. For sure. And that's another is, is, I don't think fighters, or, or just the people who are training in general, it's, uh, you have to find a gym that's right for you. For sure. Like, sometimes people get caught up in, like, the gym name and the gym hype at times, which, I get it, mm -hmm. but... If you're going to grow, whether it's as a person, as a fighter, you have to find a gym that sort of is going to have that symbiotic relationship sure. that's going to give you what you need and vice versa. And again, you can take somebody and throw them at a, at a, a you know, Jackson week or whatever, and they may not fit in because mm -hmm. that gym isn't for them. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I always stand by that. You know, you have to find uh, the best situation for you. And it seems as you found that here. I'm so blessed. This place is home for me. I mean, I, I Amazing training partners, guys like with the crazy awesome stories like Diego Costa, mm -hmm. you know, he came from Uruguay and cornered me in my fight and he just grew up kickboxing in the street. You know, grew up, <laughs> you know, <it's> just, <laughs> I love those stories. And it's like you hear about it, but like those are the movies, those are the people, those are the kind of people you hear people make movies about. Correct. And Correct. he went from that, came to America by himself at 18 years old, wanted to build his life because he wanted to be a fighter. Now he coached me and helped me create the key led the corner for the past mm -hmm. two fights and contender series and then my UFC debut. Seki Delfino, awesome from Argentina, said he wanted to build his dream, so he let everything go. Came to the States, did that too. So it's like you see risk takers and people like encourage you to do it. So to me, like it, it really pushes me forward to go. Yeah, and I was gonna ask, like being in the in this environment with, with guys who they're they're making major sacrifices in life mm. to be the greatest fighter they can be. Mm. And I would assume that's gonna motivate you and, and oh, rub off so you in a little bit of way. So much. That's dope. Yeah, these guys are awesome, like hot sauce. Uh, Barbarina, Selecki, Salter, right. Honeycutt, Ricky, like all these guys who've like been at the highest levels in our, mm -hmm. in our in our profession, they are like the guys I gotta learn from. For sure. And for me, it's like that's why you know they'll say something about me in a fight, like he's young but this, or he's young right, but right. that. But I'm like, yeah, but the guys I got beat up by for the past two years, it's not like you got beat up by one person who trains here and there locally. Right. These guys are all getting ready for fights. So correct. Like, you know, correct. Then I have Coach Juma who just puts it all together and, and leads us. So it's like. Getting the best of the best in so many different ways, even in a, a, a smaller environment, 
than you know the, the big name gyms have said. Mm -hmm. But maybe some of those guys have like their specific training partners. I don't get to learn from them the same, or it's it's not the same kind of environment because you don't get on the same training schedule. Must work. But man, you live in North Carolina. Cost of living is not as expensive as some big place right. like right. imagine Houston or some place like that where like it's crazy or Hawaii or whatever it is. So, you know, I'm here. I'm blessed to live in North Carolina. I love it here, and um, it's just the guys here are just like huge mentors. I dig it. I dig it. So. Uh, you know, you for me, we met when you uh, you had the LFA fight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Solid performance. I mm -hmm. became an instant fan. Uh, you get the shot at the Contender Series. Uh, you get the win. You get the or you get the decision win. Uh, but at that moment, you didn't get the contract. Mm -hmm. And it seems Arona hits. And then <laughs> it seems like just with MMA being the sport that it is, the UFC being in the position it is, is obviously allowing people to fight. Mm -hmm. You get the call for the contender series. Did you feel at that moment like this is my shot, or did you almost feel like ah, I'm kind of going through the process again? Man, it was interesting because there were a lot of there were a lot of questions. The first mm -hmm. time a contender series we won, mm -hmm. we fought an awesome you know Kalen Hill yeah. on the uh, LFA circuit, knocking people out left and right. Yeah, yeah. And we're like, all right, we got. The, I remember getting up there finally. Yo, we got the contract. So excited. <laughs> Wait a minute, we said like, all right, back to the drawing board. Then you know, Mr. White was like. Fight on a different promotion. I've had a bunch of different fights. Um, we come back, and I'm like, okay, cool, let's do this. I was at uh, what six and out at the time of that mm -hmm. fight. So I'm like, okay, we're gonna do this. Five fights dropped through. You know, it, it could be six or seven. If you count guys who just said they're gonna fight, and they did it, mm -hmm. or a promotion fell through. So then, well, 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 tell me what that like for you, because I, I know that's one of the issues you had at the regional level. Mm -hmm. It was just tough finding fights. What does that do for you mentally? When you're in this position, you're training, you're working hard, you're getting ready for a fight. And then, boom, fight after fight after fight is, is dropped. Like, what does that do for you mentally? For me mentally, I think it really helped me, honestly. It's oh, shit, okay. like, uh, okay. The guys that I'm around all had fights. So I didn't really have time to be selfish and focus on myself. Like, I was like, I got to be ready to help Scott. Ah, I got to be ready to help yeah, Brian. Yeah, yeah, I got to yeah. be ready to help Salter, Selecki, Honeycutt, uh, Chase had fights. People like Ricky. Right. You know, even some of the small guys, like Diego. Everybody, everybody's having something. And then cornering fights, amateurs had fights. and. Uh, it's like, especially with Corona right now, you have to quarantine yourself, mm -hmm. so I don't get to see like all my extended family. Man. So it's a little bit different. Like since like all these fights for the past month and a half have been away, mm -hmm. but it's like I always had somebody else. So like he had his UFC debut, so it's like, well, like what did I have to be selfish about? Of course I wanted to fight. Of course I wanted to do that. And I remember being like, oh, this one fell through, whatever. And then like one fight I got all the way down there, I ended up getting sick, and I was like, wait, is that the weight cut? Another thing I got sick. We're like, what's the coronavirus? We didn't even know. Like, you, like we didn't know what happened. And I was several, like, okay. It was the middle, what was it, the, yeah, right before coronavirus hit, we're like, okay, LFA title, you know what that means, LFA yeah, title, straight yeah, to see, yeah. I'm so excited, <laughs> I'm like, thank you, um, the management team, all these different things, I'm like, let's go, and then the, like, the week of, literally the week of the fight, versus uh, Daniel Madrid they were going to have, that's when they cut, they cut all travel, like, across the world, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you got to be kidding me, this is a, this is the moment, like, where you think you're, like, not a chance to see, but I, like I say, oh, God always has a better plan, and I kept working, kept training. I remember the quarantine, I told my mentor, I was like, when this is over, mm -hmm. you won't recognize me. It'll be for the better. I'm not gonna be like a jerk or anything like that, but I'm gonna be that much better. So every single day I was gonna pull up to my tree in front of my house, or doing push-ups outside, doing sprints there. Mm -hmm. I was trying to stay away from people because I said, it's my job to be ready when that time comes. Right, so sure. I said, I thought about like, you know, if you think of like a high level military unit, like a, like a SEALs unit or mm -hmm. some of that, whether they're at war or not, they're gonna be ready no matter what. And that was my ready challenge. Ready every second, baby. For sure. Ready every second. And that was my challenge for myself. So what I said, well, if you really love fighting, you're going to have to make sure you're ready. So I trained every single day, extra sessions, whatever I could do, conditioning. It didn't matter. Since the day I got back, I remember we, there's a huge fly to McCarran International. Mm -hmm. There's a restaurant called Rudy's. And I sat there and said, when this food comes out, this contender series is over. <laughs> and then, so like, whatever you put it behind you. And then from that point on, I said, I'm going to train, train, train. And then the day I walked back in the gym, after you get back from the first contender series, I said, I'm never going to uh, look back again. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to do. There's actually a sign in the gym that says, enter through these doors with a relentless sense of urgency. Man. And I was like, sometimes I have to, like, if I walk in slow, I'm like, okay, go back out, breathe, and go in and mm -hmm. get after it. And it helped me out. Like, a lot of guys, like, you know, some of my training partners that go back and forth a lot. Like, uh, Honeycutt, awesome wrestler, all American. He, he would do extra sessions with me every single day. Whether they're fighting or not, like right after wrestling. That's dope. And That's like, dope. you know, I, I appreciate him for that. You know, hot sauce, uh, all the advice of putting for kids. Brian could call him, help me out. He's coming back. Now he's making this, mm -hmm. you know, his return this weekend. I'm honored to corner him. 
Salter, amazing here, Jiu-Jitsu, and all these guys, so, uh, and wrestling, all the grapplers, just great fighters, Selecki, Ricky, you know, it's like, I was like, you know, if I can pick these guys apart by the time I pick their brains, you know, pick them apart, ask them like, questions, what's going to happen when I get ready to fight? <laughs> so that, that, that to me was like that, six fights in eight months mm -hmm. last year, and then having the same amount of time, eight months without any fights, mm -hmm. well, almost a year then, it came 11 months and a few yeah. weeks before a year, I was like, okay, like, let's go. And it was just so cool because my UFC debut was the same week as my contender series the first time. Oh, so, yeah, 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 okay, so, okay. Yeah. See, it just works out that yeah, way. For sure. And um, I thought that was a real big blessing. Like, it was very significant to me. So, okay, a year ago, you were, like, crying. Man. I mean, it never hurt to win. I was like, oh, my gosh, crying after the fight. Yeah, you got the win, but... You know, I, from my understanding, like you just weren't pleased with the performance. Mm -hmm. You obviously wanted maybe you know get a finish, for sure. get the contract. Mm -hmm. You didn't get it, but you got the second shot. For sure. You go in there and you put on an amazing performance. After once a, you, you knew you got the win, but did you know you had the contract? Well, I, I see that and know that. I remember I was like, well, we got the contract. Wait a minute, did we get the contract? Coach, I asked Coach, like, I don't know. He said, <laughs> Coach, is funny. He said he had a speech plan for me. Right, right, he was right. like, we're, we're gonna do this. You're gonna be right back to it. But I just remember thinking, like, gosh, I wanted to finish. And I was thinking, like, he started folding over. If you watch the film, did it hit low. It was a right. shot. I was like, but it looked like it. And I was like, oh, gosh. So did this mess it up. So you're thinking all these questions. Then, you go, okay, we have a contract. You watch one fight. Okay, got it. And then one dude, uh, I think Giannis, knocks the guy out cold. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he <laughs> definitely got the contract. So he has one for sure. So we don't know how many, you know, uh, wins we get out See, you, that, that's going in you the, the back. Next. And you're like, well, shit, is he, who is he giving contracts out to? Yeah, so we were like, wow. That's definitely a contract. Did I get a contract? Like, they were like, well, we did some fun stuff in the fight, but did it, right. he didn't go out. So, um, we were, you know, back and forth, so I'm sitting there. And then I found out, then my, the UFC actually get my number out that day. Jo okay, yeah. okay, okay. As far as you know, you're, you almost had like this Mike Jones moment. You know who Mike Jones is? Who? <laughs> Mike Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so, we know you, you write your number down, you pass Danny White, your number gets on the screen. Mm -hmm. I hear you got some calls. Mm -hmm. Anything wild? Any, any cool Crazy, stories? yeah. Yes, I'm like, uh, people send me pictures of their family, watch parties. <laughs> some of them some weird, weird pictures I probably shouldn't talk about. <laughs> ah, I was like, my was, man's getting them unsolicited joints. I was like, oh, what the world? <laughs> I just remember thinking, like, okay, I'm just gonna delete this, block this. People text me, hey, I live like nearby in Charlotte. I'm like, how do you know where I live? And oh, that shit. is, yeah, so that's funny. But it kind of died down. We were okay, like, it was actually McMahon's door I slid it underneath. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. That's yeah. my guy, McMahon. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you, by the way. Uh, I, I was like, I remember I saw him at that UC Albuquerque uh -huh. with uh, Scott. And I was like, I found his room. <laughs> and I slid the note in the door. I tried to push a little hard on the door so he could hear it. I tried to run it. He turned around. I turned around. He's right behind me. I'm like, oh, hey. Ah! Here's another note for you. And I wanted to fight Darren Till. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, that didn't happen. So but then. That, oh, that's right. And so, again, Cause did you have the contract when that fight, when, when the whole Darren Till thing? No. Cause I heard about it. He was like, yo, he wants to fight Darren. I was just like, wait, what? <laughs> or was that just that mentality of like, I, I just want to fight. I want to be here for sure. Or, and the opportunities coming up, I would assume. Well, yeah. So, you know, buddy Jerry Cannon here who trains at the lab, mm -hmm. he couldn't fight that fight. Cause it's something with the hit of his pectoral muscle. Right? Okay. And so that fight didn't go through. I think Till turned it down and the visa issues. And all the different things, but I saw that the fight fell through, and I thought at the time they were talking about like, coming together. Yeah. And then since Jerry put a post out, he kept making. I was like, okay, this is my opportunity to go. Like, I need to fight. I'm ready to go, and I'm, I was confident I would claim this victory. So I was like, well, I'm here. I'm ready. I'm at the UC hotel. Like, this is the perfect opportunity. One of the matchmakers has to be here. I didn't get right. Sean, Shelby, Mick, Dana White, or like somebody that's on their staff. But mm -hmm. I was, I was going to find one of them. And I remember seeing him. Like, that's Mick. So I looked over. As a question, got to his room and just slid the note under the door. And I'm like, man, I'm here to fight. Like, yeah. I, I need, I need to do this. This is what I'm called to do. So, like, I don't want to go to bed that night and like, what if I gave him a letter? What if I spoke to him? Maybe he would have asked me. Maybe they could have fought that weekend, that night. Like, who knows? And this is pre-coronavirus, so they didn't have any testing to do. And I mean, I'm always thinking like, okay, what's the worst somebody could say? No, like, that's the, that's you know. the, that's the thing is like, people, especially at this point, I've even that's sort of an evolution of me during this like period of, of thinking is like. You know what's the worst they can say is no. Like you have to be able to take that 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 chance in that moment, uh, especially like for you, you had this need to succeed. It's not a want. You had this need to just drive to succeed, and so that was your opportunity, and you had to seize it, man. So that was that was an amazing opportunity for you. You get the call. You was like, all right, we're gonna get you the contract. We're gonna sign you, and you had the quickest turnaround for a contender series. 
What was it like, you know, was it 10, 11 days notice preparing for that? So at first it was, I was going to fight the next weekend on August 22nd, mm -hmm. but uh, for some reason they give it a medical suspension. I guess oh, right. a natural one because I fought. Yeah, and then, yeah. They then they that. said, because the coronavirus, they added for more days, which is fine. But I was going to fight August 22nd, but they moved to August 29th. But since I didn't know I was getting all these phone calls from around the world, I just, I don't want to be rude on TV and pull my phone out. I don't want to look like I didn't care where I was. So I was like, I'm going to wait. Agent Lou from first round was calling. Like, Shout out to my guy Lou. Oh, you know Lou. That's my guy. That's yeah. My guy. So, like, thanks Lou. And he's get calling, 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 like, whatever. And I told Lou, like, my rule is, if I don't answer or anything, even before I answer, even if I do answer, just say yes to a fight. I'm, I don't, I don't care who it is, okay. where it is, when it is. If it's tomorrow, if it's yesterday, if it's a month from now, two years, whatever. Just say yes to the fight. Like, I don't believe in turning down fights. That's not my motto. That's not who I am. So I stand it's by. It's not the Emperor Kasang in our way. Not at all. And I said, hey, like. He's like, and then when I heard Dana say it, he was, Mr. White goes, so it seems like we have, have some kids some questions or whatever. And I was like, okay. And I was like, well, it sounded just like the year before. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> like, that, that's the only thing right in my head. So he seems like he accepted a fight. And I just remember, he's like, oh, yeah, I got a fight. Awesome. Let's go. And he said, nice. So that's how you found out about yeah, that. Yeah, I found out. He's like, it seems like you're accepted. I was like, my man. Yeah. So I was ready to go. And then I found out with Maki. Uh -huh. And I, I was a, I was a fan of Maki already because okay. the way he fights, you know, from the first game, I don't watch him. Man, I love to fight him one day, and out of Boom. respect. And then all of a sudden, a year or so later, I was like, oh my gosh, like I gotta fight this guy. Like, let's go. So that's the kind of fights I love because Maki brings it. He's a warrior, and it was a fun fight. So it was, man. And, and you look good. And you, again, it, it was a transition from the contender series to the UFC. You looked solid in your performance. Um, do you have? I know you willing to fight anybody in the time, but do you have any? If you're going, if you're building a brand, you're building a business up, do you have a path or are you just, you're just taking fights? Well, not just taking fights for me. Because it's, uh, it's, it's remember, more, this is a business at this point. For sure, yeah. We're at a different level now. For sure, yeah. That's what I'm learning too, I guess. You know, it's like, um, so, you know, guys are like, I want to fight him in the top 15. I understand that, you know, you have to wait out to work through your contract and, you know, each contract is a different mm -hmm. financial incentive to it. But for me, but here it's to be the best, like, to be in the UFC Hall of Fame. You know, when it's done, be the best past president in the future. So it's like, what puts me there? Mm -hmm. And what steps do I need to take along the way? I want to fight a guy who's, you know, coming off victories. Mm -hmm. some I mean, I am grateful, you know, because I think everybody in the UFC is, you know, awesome fighter. Good. And then it gets better and better as, like, as you climb up the rankings, as you climb towards the championship. That's my goal. Get the middleweight title, get to light heavyweight, get that title, and fight a heavyweight, get that title too. So for me, it's like, the guy's like, uh, you see Barbara Vittori. He's a good fighter. He's looking for a fight. I don't know if it's going to go through or not. Maybe it will. Um, and you guys like, he's Kevin Holland. He's pretty active. He's doing well. He's a Texas guy, right? He's yeah. uh, He actually is my guy. He's uh, yeah. he, he's uh, he helped out or he's headed out to our gym now yeah. um, to get some training. And he's, I mean, I love the way he fights. Like, you he's don't, a good, great fighter. Yeah, for sure. You don't fight guys who are just guys that are there to be in the UFC. You fight guys who are there to climb up. And those are the kind of the guys I'd be honored to fight. So I, I want those fights. I want those fights that are going to, when it's all said and done, like, he never took an easy fight, like like the great boxers who like mm -hmm. back in the day, not the guys who are just not here to talk and fight guys to beat up. They're like fighting guys who are like Lomachenko now. Right. Lomachenko said he wants champions. He doesn't have a, a lot of pro wins, but he has Dude. quality wins. Same thing. I remember when I first saw or heard of him and I watched him fight, and they was like, oh, he's fighting with a title fight. And I was like, all right, I'm going to check him out. And when they read his stats, it was like 8 no or whatever. And I was like, wait, this dude's already in a title fight. And he goes out there and he impresses. Mm -hmm. So you have fighters you have people or athletes that that have these certain abilities like yourself who can sort of uh advance quick because they they pick up skills fairly quickly they mm -hmm. they they become better at a faster rate than other fighters do and so it puts them in better positions mm -hmm. to get these fights like that you're again you're calling out Darren Till mm -hmm. people are like wait what mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so guys like you who have these abilities man I think this is where the sport is transitioning to we're gonna get uh, better quality fighters who have more skills in, in the toolbox and who's ready to put on an exciting show. Thank you. Man, because I am, I, it's been a pleasure sitting here and, and, and learn new things about my guy again. We, we met at the LFA um, just through the fighting lens, but to, to over the years to have sit down and have conversations with Thanks, you, I've appreciated and enjoyed it. And uh, I look forward to, to the next opportunity. I know you got Brian Carey, where you're going to be on this corner mm -hmm. uh, for the fight night. How, how do you like the, being in that position, the Man, corner position? It's really cool when it's your buddy fighting. He's my big yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah. Well, Brian's a huge reason. Brian was my agent managing me before okay. the first contender. So he's trying to give me guidance because he was like, you don't have to lose a lot of money because, you know, regional so you don't make as much yeah. as you do in the UFC or anywhere else in fighting. So for me, he was like, I'm going to help you out. Just 
connected me with Dana White and those guys from the first contender series. So to be in his corner, his comeback fight, post surgery, mm -hmm. the dominant fighter. You know when he fought Luke Cage, he fought Rainbow. Mm -hmm. He's a great fighter, and I'm like, this people are gonna see the best version of him yet. He's gonna get better. So for me to be in that corner, in that position, to help him, to train with him, to be his friend, like, I'm, I'm super excited. You know, guys, like that's how you put food on your table. For yeah. you know? So yeah. it's always a great moment for me to be there, and I love Vegas now. It's so becoming home. Yeah. I've been there. Really been to Vegas a lot more in the past two months now, way more than I've been at home. I know I feel it. I love it. PI is an amazing, uh, amazing space, amazing opportunity for fighters to. I know I need it now. Mm -hmm. I'm, man, my body is so broken down at the moment, so I know the feeling. Uh, but, man, I'm so happy and excited Thanks. for you. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No doubt.